Hey everyone, today we're going to be uh, learning about GDAL. So first thing, I'm just going to show you uh, GDAL's website, gdal.org. Uh, has a bunch of documentation, some tutorials, just has a bunch of information about GDAL. Uh, GDAL is a library used for manipulating rasters and vectors. Today we're just only going to be messing with rasters. If you go onto the Berlinus page, it has information about all the tools that come with GDAL. So we're just going to take a look at GDAL Merge real quick. It shows all the parameters uh, that GDAL Merge accepts, uh, all the data types and whatnot. It shows a description of what they mean and provides some examples at the bottom. The examples aren't always the best, but they are better than nothing. So if you ever get lost at any point during this, you can go to GDAL.org and look up why we're doing what we're doing or try to find some examples on it. So, all right, I have my queue just open and then I'm going to open up OSGO shell. I just went into my search bar and typed it in. And it popped right up and I hit run. So if you know where it is, you can go and launch it from there or just open it up that way. So first thing first, in order to run GDAL, we need to go to where it is saved and all the commands are. So we're going to type in CD, which stands for change directory. And we're going to type in OSGO. So I just typed in OSG and then I hit tab. So if there's a folder inside of the C drive that starts with OSG, it will just change it to that. And you can keep hitting tab and it'll change through. Or once you find the folder you want to use, just hit enter. So after I typed in OSG, I hit tab, popped up the folder that I want, and I hit enter. The next thing we need to do is go to the bin folder because that's where all the commands are saved. So we just typed in CD bin and we're going to hit enter. And that will then be set as the current directory that we are working inside of. So, all right, now that we're in the bin folder, I just am going to type in DIR, which is a command that lists out everything that is inside that bin folder. So as you scroll through, you can see that there are a bunch of GDAL commands in there. And it will also list out any folders that are inside of the bin or any commands that are in there. So if you ever located inside of a folder and you're not sure what is in there, you can just type in DIR and it will list out all the contents of that folder. So the first thing we're going to do is we have a file that is a .bill file and we're going to end up manipulating it. So we want to make a copy of it so we can then manipulate it without worrying about getting lost where we mess up and we have no option of going back. So we're going to use GDAL manage to make a copy of this file. So we're going to type in GDAL manage and then we're going to space copy and we need to put in what file are we copying. So C comma or colon slash Kenya Sentinel. We're going to the folder that it's saved in, slash, and then if you hit tab, it will just start going through all the folders and all the files inside of the Kenya Sentinel folder. So there's that bill file that we want. So we're going to make a copy of this one. And then the next thing we need to type in is where are we going to save the copy and what are we going to call it? So C colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash. We're going to move it to the archives folder and then we're just going to call it L1C underscore T36 NXF dot BIL. So after that runs, we will successfully have made a copy of the bill file and moved it to the archive folder. So if you navigate to the archive folder, you should now have a bill folder in there, your file in there. So it's still in the Kenya Sentinel folder as well because we did not move it, we just made a copy of it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to turn this .bil file into a TIFF. That's what I'm more used to working with when I'm messing with rasters is uh, GeoTIFFs. So we're going to use a command called GDAL translate to turn that from a .bil to a .tif. So first things first is you're going to type in GDAL underscore translate. And we need to put in dot O F for output format in capital G, capital T, I, F, F for geotiff, because that's what the output will be. We're going to create a geotiff. And then space, what file are we going to be messing with? So we're going to put C colon slash Kenya Sentinel. So I'm just going to type in K N Y, hit tab slash and go to the dot bil file and hit space so we're going to translate that file 
into a TIFF. So now we need to say where are we going to save this TIFF. So C colon slash can you send an all slash composites slash and we're just going to call it L1 C underscore T36 NXF dot TIF and we're going to hit enter and let that run. All right, and now as you can see in QGIS, in my catalog, we have that folder. So, uh, qu quick tip, if you hit up, uh, the up arrow, it will take you to the last command you just enter. So, if you get an error because you misspelled something, you can just hit the up arrow and go back and change that little, uh, whatever you spelled wrong, or fix the error so it runs the next time. And you can hit enter again. So right now I just went to QGIS and I brought in the TIFF into the table of contest so we can look at it. So right now we have a true color composite image of some shoreline in Kenya of Lake Victoria. So we have a good scene and now there's two other scenes that we're going to create the same thing, or RGB color composites, so we can then merge them together into one image. But the way that it's set up now is we need to combine the bands to create these color composite images. In Sentinel data, you combine bands 4, 3, and 2 to get an RGB composite. So we're going to do that using GDAL merge. So GDAL underscore merge dash O for our output. Where are we going to save this file? So C colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash composites slash and then I'm going to go into the File Explorer because we're going to do it for the first one in the scene folder, my bad. And I'm just going to copy that name, L1C underscore T36 MXD. And hit Paste. And then we're going to call it dot .tif. So it's important when we're making this composite we have to put the bands in how we want them to show up in the last one it already came in as a color composite because the bands were put in the proper order when it was made so we need to put it in the R the red band the green band and the blue band in that order so we need to navigate to where the red band is which is going to be band 4 for sentinel 2 so we're going to put C colon slash Kenya sentinel slash scenes went past it already my bad. Slash, and then we want the scene which has MXD in it. And then we're going to go to the image data and navigate to band 4 that ends with BO4. So we're going to hit space, and we need to now do the same thing for the third band. C colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash scenes slash MXD image data and we need band 3 and finally we're going to do the same thing again one more time for band 2 so we put them in RGB and that's how it will load in when it is completed so make sure you're the MXD file image data and band 2 so 432 is how we're going to put it in the next step we have a couple more parameters we're going to toss in so dash CO and we're going to put in capital letters compress equals LZW. So it's going to apply a compression to the TIFF it makes. Sometimes if the output TIFF is too big and you don't su supply it with this parameter, it will crash. So this is just a way to make sure it works and it makes the file a little bit smaller. And then we're going to put dash separate. Uh, having a little trouble spelling it here, but eventually I'll get there. So what this does is it treats each band as its own band. It doesn't merge them all together. So you'll end up with an image that has three bands so you can do an RGB composite instead of coming out with an image that is a grayscale because it combined all three numbers together and just leaves you with one band. So going into QGIS, I'm going to drag and drop it into the table of contents, right click, go zoom to layer. As I scroll out, you can see it looks good and it is in line with the other one. So we have the top scene done, we have the bottom scene done, we have one more scene to do and that's the one in the middle. So we're going to do the same thing as we did last time, gdal underscore merge, dash O for output, where are we saving this? C colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash composites slash, and we're going to go into File Explorer and just copy that beginning of the name, 
all the way up to the MXD, and then paste it in, and we'll put .tif. And same thing, we need to put the three bands in, RGB. We're going to work our way to the red band. And make sure you're in the right folder. Which MXE this time. Slash image data and band 4. Same thing for band 3. Again, make sure it's the MXE folder. Band 3. And finally, that last band. So this is going to be band 2, and then we're just going to put in the same parameters as we did before with compression and separate. So, dash co compress equals lzw and dash separate. And we're going to hit enter and let that run. Alright, go into QGIS and drag it into the table of contents. And it should appear right in the middle. So we have three color composite scenes that look good. They're all right on top of each other, or in line with each other. So this is the shoreline of Lake Victoria, for all of Kenya, I believe. It's all of it. So we want to merge all of these scenes together into just one image. So first I'm just going to remove it from the QGIS catalog. But in order to do that, we need to make sure they are in the proper projection. If they're not in the proper projection, we cannot merge them together. So while they were showing up on top of, they were showing up next to each other, they might not be in the actual projection, same projection. So we're going to use GDAL info to find out if this is true. So just type in GDAL info, and then what file are we trying to get info on? So we're going to navigate to that first tip in the composites folder, the MXD. And you're going to hit enter, and GDAL info is going to provide us a bunch of information about the statistics of each band, the extent of it, the lower, upper, uh, left and right coordinates, the EPSG, and there's the projection. So it's WGS84, UTM Zone 36 South. So if you look that up online, that is in fact that EPSG right there, EPSG 32736. So we're going to write that down. That's for the MXD TIFF. And then we're going to look and see what the projection is for the following two. So if I, I'm just going to hit up on my arrow. And then I can just start tabbing over and find the next TIFF, which is MXE.TIFF. Hit enter as well. And scroll up and take a look at what EPSG it has there. So 32736. And is it in fact the same as above UTM zone 36 south? It is the same. So right now we're two for two of them being in the same coordinate system. So we're going to take a look at the third one, the nxf.tiff. Hit enter and we're going to scroll up and see if we are three for three. Unfortunately, we are not. It's UTM zone 36 north. Uh, EPSG 32636. So what we're going to need to do is reproject these TIFFs into the same coordinate system. So to do that, we're going to use a command called GDAL warp. In order to do that, you need to know the current projection that the TIFF is in and what TIFF, what projection you want to put it to. So we're going to use GDAL warp. And first thing we need to do is what TIFF are we trying to reproject? So we're going to C colon slash Kenya Sentinel composite. So we're going to use the first one, which is MXD.tiff. And now we need to put in what we're going to, what our output's going to be. What are we reprojecting the TIFF to? Colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash composites. And we're going to slash, slash tab, and we're just going to go back a little bit and just do underscore projected dot tiff. Sorry, make that a little bit bigger for you so it's easier to see. So now we need to tell it what coordinate reference system is it currently in, and what are we going to send it to? So we're going to do 
dash S underscore SRS. So this is the current one. So capital EPSG colon 32 736 and then dash T underscore SRS. And what do we want to send it to? So we're going to send it to EPSG 3857. So same as before, capital EPSG colon 3857. That is a pseudo mercator, web mercator. A lot of the data on the dataverse is already saved like that. And I like to use 3857 because so I can put stuff into web maps very easily with it. So you can hit enter and let it run. And it should work. You know, I saw it pop up in my bin or in my catalog in QGIS. So we're going to do the same thing for the next two. GDAL warp. What file are we warping? And you're reprojecting. And then we're going to do it on the MXE. So go. Now, what are we going to call this one? And where are we going to save it? So we're just going to go back a little bit. Underscore projected. And same as above. Dash S underscore SRS. EPSG 32. 736 dash T underscore SRS space EPSG 3857. Hit enter. It didn't work for me, so I spelled GDAL warp wrong, so I hit up and I'm gonna go all the way back and just switch those two letters around. And now hit enter and it will run. So we're going to do that for the third TIFF, same thing as before, GDAL warp. And this is the NXF TIFF, and this is the one that is in a different projection system, or coordinate reference system. So dash S, dash S underscore SRS EPSG 32636, but the target is going to be the same. So we're going to do dash T underscore SRS EPSG 3857. So I spelled EPSG wrong, so I'm just going to hit the up arrow and fix that real quick and then hit enter again. All right, now that that is done, we want to just check the projection and see if it actually changed. So we're going to use GDAL info, and we're just going to take a look at the first TIFF, the MXD TIFF. So where is it at, and what is it called? Underscore projected, hit enter, and you can see the EPSG has changed to 3857. So I'm just dragging all three of them into QGIS, and they're all still with each other. All right, so now I'm going to go into the Composites folder, and I am going to make a copy of the previous TIFFs and all the accompanying files, the XMLs, and I am just going to move them into the archive. So the next thing that we're going to do is we want to put all of them together into one file. So I just removed them from my QGIS catalog real quick. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create something called an op file. And we can then pass that into the GDAL merge, and it'll be a lot easier than typing out the path for all the files that we want to merge them together. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is navigate into the folder that has all these tips in it. So that would be the composite folder for us. So to do that, we're going to type in cd space dot dot. And that's going to change the directory and actually move us backwards. So it's usually we usually go forward into a different folder. And now we're diving out of a folder. So we're now just in the ES 
geo folder, cd dot dot, and now we're just at the C drive. So if we do cd Kenya Sentinel slash composites and hit enter, we are now inside of that folder. So we're going to run a command that will create us a text file that has the path and name of every TIFF inside of that folder. So right now I'm just navigating to the composites folder because I want to get rid of the XMLs just because I want to make the folder nice and clean. I don't think it's going to make a difference in what we're doing, but I'm just getting rid of them just in case. So when we go back to OSGO shell, we're going to run the command dir slash s slash b star dot tiff. And then the greater than sign and where the location and name of where we want to save this file. So I said the greater than sign, and then we're saving ours in C colon slash Kenya Sentinel, and then I'm naming it scenes list.txt. So what this does is going to create a file for us that has the path and name of all the folders, all the TIFFs inside of that folder. So you need to be careful that you don't have any extra folders inside of the composites folder that has other TIFFs because it will list them out as well. So our final output should just be this file that has the name and path of the three TIFFs we are compositing. So what we can do is pass that into GDAL merge and it will run it. So we need to get back into the bin. So cd dot dot, cd dot dot, and then cd osgo slash bin, and we're back in there so we can run our GDAL merge. So the reason I showed you how to create an op file like that is when I was doing the merging of all the scenes for the entire base of Lake Victoria, we had about 40 of them. And that would be a lot to type in the path to all the scenes that we want to merge together. So I created a list of all the scenes that were in the final folder. And then I just passed that text file into GDAL merge. And it reads through it and says, so you're basically saying, merge all of these files inside of the text file together and create me my final mosaic. So that's what we're going to do here. We're only using three, so it wouldn't have been as big of a deal to type them all in. But now that you know this, it will save you a lot of time in the future for any time you have to merge more than two or three together. You can create a file like this, a text file like this, and place it into GDAL merge and let it read through it and run. So we're going to use GDAL merge, GDAL underscore merge. And then dash O for our output. C colon slash Kenya Sentinel slash, and we're just going to call it TCI underscore mosaic dot tiff. So we're creating a true color image of the shoreline of Lake Victoria in Kenya. Now we're going to do dash CO capital compress equals LZW. And then dash N zero. So what that is, is for the final out for the mosaic that we're creating, we're setting the no data value as zero, and that will get rid of the data collar around it when we bring it in. And now where we created that file, and we're going to place that into the command. So dash dash OPT FILE space in the location of that text file. So ours is at C, can you sentinel slash scene underscore list dot txt and you can hit enter and it will run. And then we're going to go into QGIS and bring it in to see if it worked. So we're going to take the image and drag and drop it in. And it looks good. It's all one image. Everything seems fine. And I'm going to right click and zoom to the resolution. You can pan around and take a look at it. And it looks fine. So even if you right click on it, go to properties, you'll see that it is in 3857, the coordinate system that we projected it into. So there you go.